Oh, there's fish. Look, we got ourselves a little trout. Oh, and he's covered in copepod parasites. So nasty. This guy is coated in them. So a lot of folks ask me what I'm talking about when I say that trout or that kokanee is coated in nasty parasites. And what I'm talking about is copepods. Now copepods are a type of plankton uh, parasite that attaches to the fish and creates these little lesions. Oftentimes uh, a lot of them on the skins around the pectoral fins and anal fins and then sometimes even inside the gills so today i thought i'd show you what these look like and talk a little bit about what these things are okay so here you can see this fish is pretty heavily infected there's a lot around the pectoral fin these are actually the female uh, copepods probably in the genus salmon cola there's a whole bunch of different species that attack various trout and char and these little protruding masses are actually the egg masses of the female the males are really small you can't see them and they'll burrow into the skin and into the gills so if we pull back the gills there you can see some on the inside gill plate sometimes they'll get heavily infested in the gills and these eggs will then hatch and disperse into the water column and then attach to the next host. They only have a few days to do that. But when you get these extreme infections here, it can lead to secondary infections from fungus and bacteria on the fish. If it impacts their gills, then you'll get, um, they can actually die from it uh, because they're just not getting enough oxygen. But uh, it's, said not to affect the meat quality. I'll go ahead and harvest this fish and then flight when I get home and show you what it looks like underneath the skin. Yeah, so this is salmon cola parasitic copepods and they have caused a collapse of kokanee and trout fisheries um, across the inland west. They especially become more prevalent during hotter summers and drought years when the water temperatures increase and of course that's a ever increasing problem for us um, here in the west. So for example, um, the Palmer Lake kokanee population crash was likely caused by copepods. And of course, a big problem I've noticed here, at least on our regional lakes, is that in the spring, I'll go out right after the catchable trout are planted and even the catchables are coming out of the hatcheries with these copepods in them, uh, which is not a good thing. So this one here is another small fish um, just absolutely loaded with copepods. You can see the little white flecks all up and down side of the body here. Those are all copepod infestations. I mean, that thing is just coated in nasty little parasites. And of course, that's going to stunt the ability of the fish to grow and be healthy. And this is a fish that, you know, should be harvestable in another year or two, but I doubt it's going to be. Um, it's probably not going to make it with all those nasty parasites on it, or at least it's going to stunt its growth. Ooh, fish. Got him. This feels like a little bit better fish. And like I said earlier, the main cause and the increase of uh, copepods, I just keep seeing more and more and more lakes with copepod issues on our region's lakes is that uh, just the water temperatures are getting warmer. These copepods really thrive in warm water. I mean, here we are in early September and it's supposed to be 103 degrees today, which is just absurd. Looking kind of chromey like kokanee. Let's see. Nope, just another parasite laden rainbow. This guy's coated in it. And I'm hung up on that. Oh. Ugh, he is loaded with parasites. Look at that fish. He is coated in parasites. Probably, I'm guessing, 150, 200 parasites on this fish alone. Okay, so you can see these parasites all over this fish. They, like I said, they get really dense around 
the fins and here you can see this one's got it up in the gills and you can see those little tiny things that project off there those are the egg masses those are gelatinous egg masses coming off the back of those copepods okay i wanted to show you here you can see all these parasites here all over this fish just stacks of these things it's pretty nasty i wanted to show you what the meat looks like on the underside um, a lot of people ask do this does this affect the meat quality of course these hatchery uh, rainbows usually don't have the highest quality meat to begin with but uh, we'll see there we go so there's all those parasites right there you can see here and let's look what happens on the underside if there's any effect on the meat itself and there's really nothing readily apparent it actually looks just like normal meat you'll see there's barely any of the damage extending through the skin. So it doesn't really impact the meat quality that much. In fact, this fish actually has fairly good color. It just looks really nasty on the outside with all these parasites everywhere. All right, guys, that does it for today's video. I'm curious, are you seeing more and more parasites, especially these copepod parasites on your trout back in your home waters? Let me know in the comments section below. Do you eat them or you just toss them or throw them back in the lake if you do catch them? It does make me wonder seeing more and more and more of these uh, parasite laden fish as our waters get hotter and hotter. If there's a time that we're gonna have to think about whether you know these put and grow trout in our warmer lower elevation lakes is really appropriate in terms of fisheries management let me know your thoughts below and i'll see you next time out on the water or here in the backyard and just remember fish smarter not harder bye guys